There's a uh, writer in Brooklyn, New York, that I heard about recently. She is doing one of the most captivating uh, artistic experiments that I've ever heard about. This woman is given uh, an invitation for individuals to participate in what she's calling a living story. It's a, a living story because it's never going to be written down and distributed. It's, it's not going to be published by any big book company. It's, it's a living story because every single word is going to be tattooed on the skin of participants. Go figure. If you're chosen to participate in her story, you have to fill out an application. Then you don't get to choose the word. She chooses the word for you. You can uh, pick whatever font you want. It's got to be in a classic book kind of a font, though. But you don't get to choose your word. You get what is assigned to you. You get it tattooed on your body, you take a photograph, you send it into the writer, and then you're authenticated. Now, once somebody is authenticated, uh, then they're no longer known by their name. They're known as a word. A, a word in the story. So every individual word is an important part of this lady's story. And the interesting thing is, is that uh, the only way for a word to be erased from the story uh, is by death. You got that okay? Yep, you're fine. If you accidentally uh, lose your arm or something, you had it tattooed on your arm, then you're not going to be erased from her story. How would we alter our existence if we um, imagined ourselves as words on a page? Uh, more than players on the stage, uh, words in a script, you know, each one counting, each word precious to God. If words were assigned to us by God, based on our character, uh, what would my word be? How about yours? Okay, if I was a word in God's story, would I crave so badly to be part of that story that it wouldn't matter to me what word I was assigned? Is it possible that the work is so important, that the call is so important, the experience is so important that anybody would be willing to take whatever word they got, no matter how seemingly insignificant outsiders may feel that they are? I've always struggled with identity. I mean, there was a time in my life where I walked around with my head hung really low, uh, feeling worthless. And, and the worst part is I, the people who were making me feel that way were supposedly my friends. Uh, but they were labeling me all the time. They were calling me things like sinner. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's true to a degree. But it's not who I am at my core anymore. The Bible says that I have a new identity, that God's given me a new name, a new reason for being, and I believe Him. God wants us to experience freedom from mistaken identity. I don't, I don't take the Bible's description lightly when it says that uh, if we trust in Jesus, if we follow Him, that we're a new creation. Because of what Jesus has done for us, we have a new identity and, and new names. And he calls us holy, blameless, and, and clean. There's a uh, story in the Bible that's always fascinated me. God says that uh, when we see him face to face, uh, that he's going to present us with a gift. He's going to give us a, a, a stone, a, a polished, a smooth stone that has a name on it, engraved. And and it's a, it's a secret name. It's... Uh, it's a nickname. It's a name that God knows me by. To think that God has a nickname for me, that God has a nickname for you, that's priceless. It will never be published. The world won't know about it. It's how he knows me.